this video, we're going to take a look at some of the new features added to version 2.0 of ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud. We're going to start off with an integration of ArcGIS Pro, the premier desktop application for GIS and map making, and an integration between ArcGIS Pro and ArcGIS Maps for Adobe to bring maps from ArcGIS Pro into Illustrator for graphic design. So here I am in ArcGIS Pro. I have the most recent version installed. And with this version, you have a new export type that's available under the export panel called the AIX. To get to this, you can author your map just like you would, add your layers, add labels, symbolize them. But if you're going to do a lot of graphic design, you can hold off some of the rendering um, in Illustrator. Set up your map or layout, come to your share tab, and then click on the export layout button, which will bring up this panel. And here you will see the .aix file in your export types. Fill out this form, fill out a location about where you want to export this file to, input your output input your resolution that you want to export it at and click export. This should generate a file, which now you can use with ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Illustrator. So we're gonna to switch to Illustrator. And here I already have the extension installed. If you don't have the ArcGIS Maps for Adobe extension, it should be available under Windows extension, download it from our product page and install it based on your operating system, either Windows or Mac. Install it and sign into the extension using your the same named user, the same ArcGIS Online named user that you used in ArcGIS Pro. Once you sign in, we'll come back to this extension panel in a little bit. Once you sign in to the extension, under your illustrators file, open menu. Uh, a new export format called ArcGIS Adobe Illustrator Exchange file. This allows you to bring in those AIX files that you generated out of ArcGIS Pro. Once the AIX file opens in Illustrator, it comes in as an or as artwork, which is organized in a layer structure that should match the layer structure you created in ArcGIS Online. From this point onwards, you can use your standard Illustrator graphic design tools to apply, apply your design. You can choose to work with individual objects if you want to, or you can select a bunch of objects from your layers and apply your own design. So do something like You can also edit individual object types by selecting them and editing them as needed. So there you have it. You can now work with your map and layout from ArcGIS Pro in Illustrator with ArcGIS Maps for Adobe. And let's take a look at some of the new features in the extension itself. So if you're not familiar with the ArcGIS Maps for Adobe extension, it's an extension that allows you to bring in GIS data from your ArcGIS platform into Adobe Illustrator for graphic design. So one of the new features we're gonna look at is a new tool, a new process that we've added to, to do some cleanup of artwork or some of spatial that you might work with. So here I have a map board, which I previously created and downloaded. And if you don't know how to uh, use the extension to create your map boards and download them, I would suggest to look at some of the earlier videos that introduce how to use this extension. So over here, I have this map, which is a bunch of road, lay road features over an area over San Francisco and a hillshade layer. I've already downloaded this. Sometimes we know with linear features, we see some issues like this. Let me zoom into this map a little bit. 
you can see that this road follows this curve around this mountain. And because of this curve, the road gets split into these individual objects. This kind of can be a little bit tricky to work with and to design. So new with the version 2.0, we've added a new tool, which you can now find under your processes window. And this processes window also looks a little bit different. I'll kind of go over it. In this tool, you'll find in this processes window, you'll find the new tool called join lines. This allows you to join individual segments into a single segment. So to do that, you select your layer in your layers panel, which has all the artwork for that for the features that you wish to join. Select the tool in your processes window and simply click join lines. So this tool is going to go through each feature in that collection and join those objects. The joined objects are added to a new layer in turn off this one. Move this here. The appearance for this a little bit, just round off the caps. And now you can see I have a much more smoother line for, for this data set, for this map. And you also might have noticed that this the processes dialog itself looks a bit different. So let me just point out some of the new things that we've done to this processes window. If you are used to uh, using some of the custom symbols workflow where you can apply your own symbol assets to the map, you may remember that we had we, we used to have you go into a separate settings window to set the path to your symbol library or to your asset library. You can now do all that in one go in this processes dialog itself. So it's going to save you a couple of steps and a couple of clicks. You can also turn this custom process to run automatically on sync by checking on this checkbox in here. Simply set that up and use it in your workflow as you would in the past. Another new feature that we've added in this version 2.0 is the ability for you as an advanced uh, map designer, if you're working with data sets, local data sets like shapefiles, Sometimes your shapefiles may have an embedded projection system in it. So I've added a shapefile for Pasadena in California, and it's using a local projection. So as a map designer, you can now control whether you want to use that data's projection or if you want to ignore it for now and continue to use the default. I would like to use the data's projection, so I'm going to click on this. So this Make sure that the data is being projected in the right space and that it's being used for your map design. You can see it under the settings menu here. This was in WGS84. Another thing that we've done different is we've added some improvements to the way you can now add content. Basically, we've done a usability improvement on how you can add content. All the libraries that you're familiar with that you might be used to browsing and looking for content is, is now easily available under on the left side of your dialogue and it's always going to be there. You don't have to search for it through uh, different dropdowns. All the filters are grouped under this filters dropdown here. And you have two different ways to view your result set as a list or in a tile view. You still have your favorites. You can still do the search. So let me look for a imagery layer that I can add to this map. Same thing, you can still do favorites if you have access to Arceus Online or Plus. So that's it. Those are some of the new features that we've added to do.co. We hope you'll enjoy using it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.